Yeah, I think the, the trap a lot of people fall into with Ubuntu is if you have a new GPU and like a really mm -hmm. new GPU and you're maybe like a year or so into an LTS, that's when you start seeing problems. Sure. Yeah. But, uh, well, we disconnecting again. What is going on with Discord today? <laughs> I love this. I love this program. Uh, we can, good? Can you? Can you? Can, yeah, yep. we good. We good. Yeah. This yeah, is a I mess that... today. I've never had Discord that, be this fine. bad. That, that's fine. Nothing will stop us from having great conversation. Uh, I've been saying that uh, Linux isn't... When, when we're talking about uh, LTS distros, there are lots of hardware support missing, not just GPUs. For example, yeah. uh, I, I'm a camera guy. I like taking photos. And recently I bought my new new, new camera to, to, shoot, to take photos with. And if you have an LTS distro, I think if you have Arch, by the way, uh, you can't... Uh, edit new raw formats like RW2, RW2 from the Linux, from mm -hmm. the Linux, because they are not the, the support for those raw formats are not uh, ha hasn't been added to the duck table and uh, raw therapy. Mm -hmm. There is no option for that. And when you use LTS distro, I think uh, people uh, like to call LTS distro stable. Mm -hmm. I don't. I think they are they are just uh, they are stuck in they are stuck in time. And the really stable distro is Arch. <laughs> because Arch allows you to access new hardware and while being reliable to you. I think Pop! OS is the best of both worlds. Where like, yeah, you yeah, get a lot of new drivers, stuff. but like, it doesn't, re like, it doesn't really matter if Grub is out of date. No. It doesn't, matter okay. if, it doesn't matter if like, SystemD or the GNU toolkit's out. Not really. For, like the average user, it's not really a big deal. Like, sure, sure. And like the way that they've got it set up really is suitable for like yeah. GPUs are obviously like the big thing. Yes, obviously you have like other things people care about, but there's a reason why people recommend Pop OS specifically like for people with a gaming use case. Yeah, and you you can download it, you can download it Pop OS with the uh, Nvidia drivers too, mm -hmm. uh, which it's actually a nightmare to to explain to a newcomer how to install drivers in Fedora. And if you install Linux, I mean, you have two options. You have two options to install new drivers or proprietary drivers. And when people install Linux for the first time, they have no idea what's the difference between them. Yeah, yeah. Like, the fact that... I, I get why Fedora is like that, because they're, like... They've got some licensing restrictions about why they... Sure. But, like, if, you're a, if you recommend Fedora to a new user and they have NVIDIA, like, they have to go and read a blog post just to have basic things functioning, and... Yeah. Like, it's just... Fedora's a great distro, but it's really... Do you remember the, the period where there was a lot of, um, a lot of Linux YouTubers who were like, Fedora is the new Ubuntu? It's like, no. Yeah, yeah. Please don't. Please don't recommend it like that. Well, it's true. I think... Fedora is great, but it's not suitable for beginners. It's 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 far from that. It's it's uh, it deploys with vanilla GNOME, which isn't beginner friendly. It doesn't install uh, NVIDIA drivers. It doesn't come with NVIDIA drivers, and these two problems are already they can, they can cause a lot of uh, psychological damage to the to uh, the to the new user. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, well the um. The issue with the with GNOME, you could just recommend Fedora KDE, but if they have an NVIDIA GPU, like Yeah. If yeah. they have an NVIDIA GPU, nothing's gonna save them. <laughs> <laughs> true. True. If they're if they're like using a laptop that only has like an integrated Intel or AMD uh, APU or they've got an AMD GPU in their system, it yeah, they would it's still a lot have to it's... deal with with vanilla GNOME. <laughs> well, sure, but again, you could you could I, recommend Fedora KDE that... or one of the others. Yeah, but I don't think well, speaking of Fedora GNOME, I'm not sure if GNOME Tweaks is pre-installed on Fedora. Probably isn't. I'm. It, it isn't pre-installed on Ubuntu. It's only pre-installed on Arch. 
So you have to explain to somebody who is new that they have to install a separate utility. That, that will turn them away from, uh, from Linux. I'm seeing videos on how to install GNOME tweaks on Fedora, so I'm going to assume <laughs> that it is not installed. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, annoying. And that, that, that's, yeah, that's a big problem, actually. Mm -hmm. I rely heavily on GNOME tweaks uh, to set up do. my... Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> it, it should come pre-installed, yeah. Yeah... Again, like the fact that GN like it's so weird, right? Because it would be one thing if GNOME tweaks was like doing things that shouldn't be done, but all the stuff that GNOME tweaks does, like it's doing it things that should be that's included in the GNOME, in GNOME settings. Yes, yeah. totally, totally, I agree. It shouldn't be a separate application. I understand that. Uh, that's that's the way it is. I understand that GNOME tweaks occurred as an application way before GNOME forty. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a legacy application, but still, we need to do something with that mm -hmm. to make no more appealing to the new audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or oh, it's not going to happen. That's the thing. It's not going to happen. <laughs> we, we need to build a bridge between folks who, like you, you were, you were motivated enough to learn about Arch, learn about using Arch and Hyperland. Mm -hmm. And people like you, they will be motivated enough to, un to, un to install GNOME tweaks and learn how to use a computer the way it is designed by the GNOME project. But mm -hmm. a lot of newcomers, a lot of people who just bought their first laptop on Linux, who just who want to install Linux and forget about everything, they want to use a PC. They are interested more about PC, about photo editing, about video editing, about chatting online, mm -hmm. about v about gaming on Linux. They are not interested in setting up a Linux, a Linux desktop. So mm -hmm. we need to make that process as user-friendly as possible. Now, when people talk about this, I think... The, the part that someone might bring up, like, oh, but it's it's more user-friendly than ever. Like, yes, it is. Like, yes, if we yes, it if, is. If we compare things to, like, you know, Linux in 2010 or... Yeah, or five yeah. years ago. But if you want to go back even further, like, let's go back to when Ubuntu came out and Ubuntu revolutionized the Linux distro. Like, before Ubuntu, yeah. setting up Linux was considerably harder. Ubuntu re... And because Ubuntu was, like bankrolled by Mark Shuttleworth, who was a multi-millionaire already, very, very rich guy, um, Ubuntu raised the bar on what a Linux distro should be and what a Linux distro could be. And yeah. it made it possible to actually sell a laptop running Linux. Now, people who bought them, they had issues because back then there were also issues with modems that only worked on Windows. Um, Windows modems are a fun thing. But that raised the bar. But if you look back at what Warty Warthog is now, like, it's it's a pain to use, right? Yeah. And that's fine. It made sense in 2004, but we've improved a lot since then. And there's a yeah. lot of things that... Just, just the existence of GUIs to do a lot of things really has helped a lot of people actually find Linux more approachable. 